everyone, and welcome back to the Triforce podcast uh, with me, also P Flex, oh, yeah. also Sips. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> We're back for another week of, of this. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? You, fe- you feeling you feeling good this week? You're sure. Feeling, like, positive. You feeling like you want to take the world? Grip, grip it by the balls and just fucking ram, run away. Yeah, ram it, the, its balls into um, just flee with a it microwave. To a Caribbean yeah, Caribbean island and just embrace it. Embrace on the, beach. the balls. Yeah, just grab just it by the yeah. pussy and drag it around the room and, Holy and crap. fucking take care of business. That's what that's I'm that's how I'm feeling today. Yeah, flax flax has nailed the summary of how <laughs> I'm feeling today. So I uh, this week I, I went to the doctor right. about uh, this anxiety I've been having and stuff like that, and she gave me some medicine. Right. And it's like a tiny little box with tiny little tablets. Yeah. And it's got, listen, listen to this. This huge scroll. It looks like something that you would use in medieval times to read a list of heresy charges. Yeah. It's this huge scroll explaining what, how to use it and what it does and stuff like this. So my favorite part was that one of the things you might have is inappropriate happiness right <laughs> right <laughs> thought, what does that cover like what do, what counts as inappropriate right happiness? like laughing at a funeral that's yeah, the I first that thing i thought of was one. you know you beat a funeral <laughs> when they're lowering the body into the hole and be like what the fuck dude you're like oh sorry it's the drugs talking. Sorry, I'm but on drugs. Inappropriate happiness. Yeah. Maybe like enjoying being in a queue. Yeah, you're like, um, you tap on the person in front of you. This is fucking great. <laughs> so much fun. Man, I, I feel like you've got like uh, some little pills and a scroll and stuff like that. And um, I feel like you just get shit faced and accomplish the same thing. Like inappropriate happiness. Yeah. Because like, that's, that's I, one side of it. Anytime I'm drunk, I'm fairly inappropriately happy like uh like uh, in general i would say you know what i mean is like, when you when you're drunk you think yeah so do you think the secretly these these pills just get you get you drunk it's like a different kind of yeah that's that's crazy to think though that you're taking something that can alter your uh state of mind uh so intensely you know what yeah, i mean yeah but it's a it's very mild all it's a it's an anti anxiety the doctor was like we can go what, a few ways here We can give you some tablets. It'll make you super happy. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. She said, but you'll (laughs) basically be on them for good. Like, you know, and the dose will have to keep going up and everything. I thought, well, that sounds shitty. So then she said, I don't want to do that. I want to put you on this thing. It's totally non-addictive. It's just an anti-anxiety thing. Rebalances the chemicals in your brain. I, I can't remember what the chemical is. It might have been cortonin. That might something like that was the chemical in your brain that causes panic and anxiety, and there's too much of that. Uh, I mean, you know, you see me play Dota. It's a it's a mad panic, and I'm wondering if hours and hours, year after year, playing Dota has changed the brain chemistry to the point where now my brain constantly thinks I'm being ganked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. And I'm about to die. Or well, it's a team game, so like maybe you're stressed out about having to deal with like teammates oh, and stuff. You know, it's my life is like oh, I'm, I love I'm in an unwarded jungle, and you know, Earth is going to come out with an abyssal blade any second. Oh my God, you're so right. That is what being alive is like. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, we are in an unwarded jungle. Yeah. That is so uh, such an appropriate metaphor for life and for, and for, uh, for humanity. It's true. Yeah. And medicine is like oh, it's like balance God. changes. Uh, oh, really caught me. You know what I mean? Like it, they come oh, with positives. Yeah. There's occasional. They come balancing. with buffs and then there's there's nerfs as well sometimes yeah. like you, you get an item. i can put you on these ones and they'll make you pretty happy for the most part but you'll lose control of your hands <laughs> entirely um that's yeah. that's the drawback oh, that would be way worse inappropriate hand control oh, like imagine if like you were just you, you, you like every time you were in range of a woman's boob you just uncontrollably reached in out range. and grabbed it. I like I, that yeah. description. I have to like, I have to stop myself, honestly. Like, I don't know, there's just this desire to like, uh, in my head. In I'm your like, head, oh. you you see a woman's breast and you think, I could grab that. Yeah. That's in range. Could, uh, that's you're in- like the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> you're just fucking walk, range. you're walking through the hospice and with like constant jazz hands like you can't stop you're just you know like a dressed as a magician doing jazz hands with a top hat and uh smiling i think you can do that i think you can I, I think i'm only a fraction of a second away from like from like just i don't know I, well, I've always humans are, right? We're always on the edge of doing stuff that kind of automatically that we don't quite, or saying things inappropriately that we don't quite mean. I and think you, ha- you are. Most of the time, 99% <laughs> of the time, you manage to stop yourself. But you can. I can always, I'm always, my fear. And the 1% that, is that time you had a personal trainer. Yeah, I was right? just thinking about that. I'm thinking yeah. most people 
to that story to most people was like more evidence of shit Lewis says and just kind of sometimes like I like the way you lump us in with like you're there's a hair trigger in your brain and you're just like oh I really want to say something super inappropriate and do something really bad here I don't think that's most people. A lot of people are <laughs> really like that. No, I don't know if like they just, are, though. Um, that's the thing. A like... lot of people aren't, don't have any filter. I mean, obviously... That's true. Most most of the time I do, and, and I, 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 I that's what we I describe it as. And I'm always very paranoid that 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 my filter won't one day be there and it will I will just accidentally do something I the really thing is, should never do. I, I don't think you can look at it as a negative because first of all in a way I actually admire the honesty of someone saying something that might be inappropriate but that they actually want to say. Like sometimes yeah. you think there are there is definitely a time and a place but you wouldn't be Lewis if you didn't say shit that's other people might not have even thought. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Like a lot of times, kids will say things that are racist or like you know offensive, and without even realizing, because they don't either understand that that is offensive or they don't have a filter. They don't necessarily mean it in that way either. Oh, this happened. Um, this happened to me two days ago. My youngest was trying to say chicken nuggets, and she mispronounced nuggets right. as the N word, and <laughs> right. I was like, "You can't say that." She was like, she tried to say it again and she said it again. And I was like, no, 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 it's nuggets. She honestly had no idea. She had no, she has no exposure to the N word at all. Like she's right, never right. heard it in her life. So it's just her mispronouncing. I feel like that would be quite a common thing. Yeah, I think, uh, absolutely. I think kids, absolutely. Because of, the, because of the chicken nuggets being so close. It's to... like a vowel away, right? It's like super yeah. easy. So, But you always, we always do that. We just skip the, skip, just like when you're doing a, a phrase like that, you, you switch around the first two letters. And that's why I, I mean, I was always told, like this one guy who who said, "Oh, you're looking for like family friendly swear words. Just say chicken nuggets." And I was like, "Oh, chicken nuggets. I like that as like a yeah, oh, yeah. chicken nuggets." Uh, the, the but the it's the intent behind it though, right? You can't mask like swearing because like you 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 are intending to like the intent to swear is there, but you're just like sort of covering it up with like with something else, right? Yeah. So, like, it's like still, like when they used to dub movies. You're still on, sinning. On TV. Yeah, you're still sin. Like if you, you're not you're not supposed to swear if you're a true Christian. Christian, you shouldn't be swearing and but masking swears with like pu 55 y or like <laughs> the p155 and and all that kind of stuff is you know that like your your sinful intent is apparent is all i'm saying like uh, mask all you want but i mm. i see through your 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 cloak of lies and tricks wow. some of my old relatives are do say racist things occasionally right. um it's still a thing that that but that was just their generation, and you can't really correct them. And I was thinking, if I had to correct them, how I would do it. And I would be like, I would almost say something like, you know, you can't call the Germans Nazis anymore, you know, or something. I mean, like I that, do that all know? the time, but I do it as a joke. And I, I you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, when I'm playing Hell Let Loose, World War II based game. Uh, I, I always like to point out the fact that there are German servers out there that say German language and mic only, and the name of the server is like a reference to some legendary Panzer division. And I'm thinking, oh, if they do that, I'm going to call them Nazis. Like, you know, I'm sorry that <laughs> you know, if you're being, uh, if you're yeah, acting yeah. like someone who's like, you must only speak German on this server, or. We will name ourselves after the famous Panzer <laughs> Division that smashed the communists at Kursk. You know, I'm like, hey, hang on a sec, guys. Like, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you Nazi bastards. I love how you're the voice of reason in this as well. <laughs> like, hang on a sec here, yeah. guys. Whoa. Yeah. It's, oh it's just, it's God. funny to me that there are a lot of, um, especially when it comes to World War II, because obviously so many people secretly, like if you, you if uh, there's a, a website called Quora that I, 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 I'm, I don't know when I signed up to it, but I get messages Quora from it. Quora is one of these fucking websites that you Google a question and, and it, there's some old woman or middle-aged woman on Quora saying like, my kid's not eating her eggs for the third day in a row. What's going on? <laughs> right. You know. That, that, that's like, one side of Quora, what? definitely. But the other what? side How of it is... How does that one end? I want to... Like, <laughs> yeah, what, tell us the secret. <laughs> I want to know what happened to the, the, the no eggs for three days challenge. Well, you know, no egg like... <laughs> But But the, the, other, the other side of Quora is a lot of history and military questions. Right. And I would say 90% of them seem to be... The Germans could have won, couldn't they? It ju they just needed to do this, they needed to do that. And I'm thinking, first of all, yes, it's an interesting question to ask is, could they, the, the Nazi Germany have, have won? Yeah. I've read a lot of stuff saying, no, they, they couldn't have. Like, it was essentially doomed from the, the start, uh, which is a, a good thing, of course. But it, long term, they couldn't have done what they wanted to do. It was, it was too much of a stretch. Uh, and they lacked the resources that they needed to really do 
what they wanted as fast as they needed to. But anyway, the point is, what, why are so many people fascinated with they could have won? And a lot of people saying, how much better were the German units and how much better were tanks? And I'm thinking a lot of it is this wish fulfillment of, oh, we were so close, you know what I mean? Of a lot of people who did secretly mm. crave yeah. that order. Yeah. And how much better would things have been if, if they'd won and everything? I think there is a, well, a think part it, of some people where they, want it, they wanted it I think, and it didn't happen. I think early on, I think, I, I think throughout Hitler was totally insane. But early on, I think he delegated more. And I think the problem later in the war for them uh, not for the rest of the world, but definitely for them, was that Hitler got more involved with uh, getting in the way of the strategies and making dumb de- even more dumb decisions sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, I mean, think, he, he, did, I he think insisted his, on all kinds of stupid stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, I, think like, his, I think his craziness just started enveloping like all levels of command sort of thing. Whereas early on, I think he had strategists and generals that just sort of said, we're, we will do it this way, and then they just went and they did it, and 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 it was fine uh, for them. But then, like later on, I think he there was there were a couple of blunders that were definitely attributed to him, where he got involved and forced something. I, I also think there's the fact that some people didn't want to admit that things weren't going to work out because you'd have to go and tell Big, Big H. Yeah, well, uh, they were they were shit scared of him because he was actually insane. Adolf. Adolf, it's it's Hans. Uh, yeah, about the Eastern Front. Uh, just a qu- just a quick update. <laughs> yeah, how's it going? Yeah, crinkle, crinkle. Oh, great, yeah, it, it, wonderful. Uh, we've lost we've lost some men. Uh, some men are frozen to death in the cold. I mean, he, uh, he, just a couple. <laughs> it's still good. He didn't want. He didn't. Yes, we're still at Stalingrad. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> No oh, man. Hey, have you guys seen this show that's on, I think it's on BBC One on a Friday. It's called The Goes Wrong Show. Have you seen this or heard of it? No. Fuck no. me, man. It's really funny. Oh, isn't funny. it based on a play? There was a play called The Play That Goes Wrong? It is, yeah. But so every week it's like a different play, but it's like, there's all these, it, it's just, it's dumb slapstick, but man, it is really fucking funny. Like there's been, I think three or four episodes. I'm not oh, sure if it it's out. like just the first series or whatever, but... I've I've really liked it. Like it is just like it's very innocent, you know, like there's just lots of like stupid shit like 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 props like being handed to them by like, you know, some dude, you know, like some 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 like stagehand or whatever, but like he manages to like get in in shot and stuff. Like it's just everything that can go wrong goes wrong, you know, like you open a door on the set and it le- leads to nowhere, so the guy but like the, all of the actors are like totally committed to seeing the play through no matter what happens sort of thing. It's really it's it's pretty clever. It's pretty funny. Like uh I I you should check it out if you haven't seen it. It's 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 good. I, I've been laughing yeah, a lot. Good. I like a little recommendation off the old sips. Yeah. Yeah. So you you watch terrestrial TV. I like it. <laughs> stay, 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 <laughs> condescending. It's weird. It's a weird recommendation. Oh, uh, fascinating. You watch terrestrial television. How intriguing. <laughs> it's weird because I don't watch that shit anymore. No, I don't watch you know? television don't watch, sips. I, but I gave up on BBC <laughs> and ITV long ago when fucking Mrs. What, Mrs. Brown's Boys was on. Oh. And I was just like, uh, I'm yeah. done. I mean, I don't watch any I'm of that I'm done with shit, all yeah. terrestrial TV. I've been Mrs. watching the, the SAS one on Channel 4. That's oh, my, mate my wife that. still watches a, a lot of uh, terrestrial Fuck TV. Fucking what? Like, what is that? I'm Ross Kemp, and I'm here with fucking Bear Grylls drinking my own piss. No, no, <laughs> it's like so. It's like ex SAS guys, like who who do like this thing where they they people try out and they they do the same sort of things that they have to do to get into the SAS. Like they have to do this shit where they like fall off a cliff backwards uh, into like into water. But and... does one of the other SAS guys catch them, and it's like a trust and faith thing? Or no, no, they, they just they like, just fall off just, a cliff. Yeah, that sucks. You just fall off a cliff backwards with your arms crossed and oh if you God. can't do it you're out like there, it's it's super <laughs> unforgiving that's the it's kind like, of shit you'd have to get into a gang you haven't done this yeah give me your number you're out like it's just you yeah you're not gonna make it sort of well thing. you've got to uh run across the road right and slap that bloke in the face and call him a fatty and then run back here yeah. Or you're not. Or you're not in the SAS. You're yeah. out of the That's SAS. That's exactly it's, what it's, it's like. It's interesting though because it's like the hardest. It's like I think it's the the hardest like test to of of any. It's, it's meant to be the to hardest into. in the, in any military. 
Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, we mentioned it last week, actually. Yeah, yeah it's this, interesting. Um, yeah. I, I've only like half, like been half watching it. Like, I'm not like super into it, but it, it's pretty good. It's all right. You know, you but, know, what I do think is weird is like the, the SAS for, for for a long time, like and especially now, we, we don't really know what they're doing. No, like they're they're so covert that that, that they yeah, they're like Rambo, like they're yeah, behind they enemy lines. But but you know, we kind of see that as a thing to be proud of. I was like, oh yes, yeah, yes, they're out there. But I'm like. Aren't they working for us? Like, I hope they're being used in a good way. Of course, I'm sure they are. And they're not sure just going out there yeah. to fuck up people who say something mean about the SAS on Twitter. They're like, right, lad's got a new mission. This lad from Cheltenham slagged us off on Twitter. We can handle this. I want a full unit. Five men go in the front door, five in the back. Oh, gas is cut out. Rah! That's right. And then we're going to get him out here and we're going to give him a wedgie, the likes of which he's never seen, Mike. I'm surprised That's by right. the level of swearing uh, coming from somebody who swears quite a bit. Even you're taken aback. Yeah, the these swearing. guys are on a whole different level. Well, that's wow. an army language that's been going since hundreds and hundreds of years. You know, you'd get some. Some posh fucking asshole, you know, officer in yeah. World War One, hanging out with the troops, you know, in the trenches, and he'd be, he'd be like, "My goodness me, the boys are using some very flowery language in the trenches." Yeah, yeah. Can we stop the effing and jeffing, please? It's rather a lot. Well, I think like officers yeah. are like that, but then the trench boys are like, "Oh, get past me, my fucking chalk, right? Fucking now, fuck you, fuckity, fuck, fuck, mother, motherfucker." Like that's like, but like the SAS guys, even more so. Like it's actually staggering how many fucks they can fit into one sentence. I thought I was pretty good. But. No, absolutely. It's very, very much like that. And I noticed that in the cadets as well. I think I think this... <laughs> I think, I think, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so I went to the SAS camp. I talked about it last week. Right. Right? It's, it's, just, it's just funny. It's just oh, funny. Fuck me. The way we're, we're talking about people joining the SAS, you're like, yeah, I was in the, the cadets. cadets. <laughs> <laughs> With Tarquin and, uh, and all of all of the cadets other... Cadets doesn't sound as cool. No, it doesn't. All right, Thank you. Uh, I think I think this I think this is people partly people envisioning like an alternate yeah because people say oh look how close we were to nuclear Armageddon you know look how close we were to this happening or that happening obviously it didn't um, but it's nice to like but people often set kind of alternate reality like the man in the high castle yeah. or whatever you know when Germany won the war and I think there were times when if a different decision had been made which yes I I agree like history it's like destiny we're, we're frozen we can't change anything but yeah. um, people like to speculate also I think it's partly propaganda from wartime when people were like you know Hitler's at the door he could he could boat over here anytime you know they got their little motorboats they're going to come over and fucking invade we need to we need to be this is this is it you know you have to be on board or we're going to lose kind of thing you know and so i think it is still in the popular consciousness that that certainly from the speeches and things that were done at the time that it was a dire situation i, I get the impression that you know, if we didn't make it out, I, I think it's much easier you know, to it get. Have... It's much easier to get your population on board with things like rationing and all the young people uh, being co-opted into this war effort. If there is an imminent threat, if you come out and say, "Lads, <laughs> we're going to be fine," they can't invade us. There's kind of a lax attitude, and well, what are we worried about? So I think it was important for the mentality of the nation to focus them on, "Hey, this could be it." And it really, it could have been, like, especially from their perspective, what Sip said about, oh, I think Hitler was crazy. I, I completely agree. And look, he definitely fucked a lot of stuff up. But even without that, the purely logistical effort required and the lack of resources that they had, yeah. it, it would have been impossible. Like the lack of oil was fundamental. They just did not have the capacity to run this vast war machine over this huge distance. No, and you're just going to run out of dudes eventually. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's like, like yeah, in Hearts well, of Iron, you know, manpower is going to dwindle. Well, that's the There's thing. Like, be losses. A lot of people don't realize, like, um, it, like in World War Two, you know, everybody says that, like, you know, oh, France just, like, just, just keeled over and gave up, sort of thing. But uh, like, France's military were fucked. By the time World War Two broke out, like no, no, they, they were they the best had, in the world. They, they were the they had the best army in the world. They were the best, but they had but they had very low numbers that they couldn't afford to to lose because they'd had generations of of soldiers like wiped out in previous wars, sort of thing. Like they, yeah. the, the death toll from World War One itself for France was like insane for for like true, their army, but it would have been the same for Germany as well. Think about it that way. It, it would have been, but I don't know if it was as bad. And I and I think I'm not sure. 
I think the population of Germany is more so than France, or maybe it was back then. Or, but there was definitely factors involved with France saying we just we we just cannot afford this. Like it, it, it was, we, it was would also the. I, I think us. another part of it was that they they'd invested a lot in the Maginot Line. They had they honestly did have the the best army and really good tanks and all the rest of it for the time. They had a they had a, an army that was seen as unbeatable, and they had to because they were worried about getting invaded again. They knew that this was coming, but they really didn't want it. And all the generals were guys who were from the World War One, remembered it, and were like, never again. Like, we cannot do this again. And they just did not want another war. So when it came, they thought, well, we can win this. There's only one way they can come. They have to do this. We've got all our best units. And they did the most unexpected thing and went through the Ardennes and, and then just zoomed. Like, the, the Germans pushed it so hard. Yeah. The, the, the attack that they took France completely by surprise, surrounded a lot of units, and it was just like, well, fuck it. Rather than lose all these men, we'll, we'll surrender. Like, um, I, I think that that was a big part of it, was this this terror. I had a similar experience last summer. Um, I, uh, I, I, I <laughs> When land, you were in the cadets? I landed in uh, St. Malo, <laughs> and I zoomed uh, straight through to Disneyland Paris, and the French were just, <laughs> they weren't, weren't prepared. <laughs> all the French tourists they were like, prepared. They are this blitzkrieg of Sipsism, this, yeah, taking us by surprise. Like, this man is incredible. Like, and I was we just, uh, I got... They 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 they, they, they keeled over for for that as well. So it was. It was it you was, were talking nice. about faith earlier, and this is funny because we I had a quick chat on Discord this morning with a couple of my lads, and uh, we were talking about David and Goliath, right? Right. Obviously, that's like the the fable of everybody knows David and Goliath. David was the underdog and all the rest of it. Right. But in classic sort of documentary historian style, especially military historians, so they I watched this video a while back. This lad explaining that actually Goliath was the underdog in that fight. Well, when you consider the uh, terrain and the range, not to mention the fact that the sling was the uh, artillery of the battlefield in his day, you know, explained how yeah. a lad in heavy armor trudging towards David across open ground was essentially a sitting duck. And David could just hit him with his sling and these things have like the, the kinetic power of like a bullet. Like it's insane. So what? So the modern equivalent is like a guy with a gun versus a knight. Is that what you're saying? Essentially, David was not outmatched at any point in this fight, was this this military historian's uh, take on it. Right. And when we talk right. about a David and Goliath fight, what we typically mean is winning against all the odds. But if you look at it, you know, properly... In the, in the, in the time. In the context of military history, the sling at range on open ground is completely dominant and was the exact counter to these kind of heavily armored uh, units, which is what Goliath was. If you read the, the the verse, he's heavily armored. He's described as being bronze armor. He's got a javelin and all the rest of it. And David was always going to win that fight. Like the, if he was any kind of competent slinger, which we know he was from the story anyway, he, he was never going to lose. Like it was, a, it was not a fair fight. So I think it is funny when we take David versus Goliath, you know, David always wins that fight, so it should people shouldn't use it. It's always but Dave. It, I just thought it was funny. Fucking David wins. It's fucking Dave. Is that a biblical? Is it biblical? Yeah, yeah. Because oh, right. then get this: it's not enough that David David hits him in the forehead with the sling bullet. It sinks into his forehead, so it's gone right into his brain. What does David do? Goes over, takes Goliath's sword, cuts his fucking head off. And it's like, fuck yeah! Like, yeah, that's I mean, that's standard. Ends. You could tell David was in the cadets. Like, that's, that's standard <laughs> fucking cadet. But then I was talking about my favorite, my favorite. And I feel like this Bible verse was personally written for me. Hang on. Oh, it's my reminder to take my tablet. I already did it. Anyway, his, nice. I feel like this verse was specifically written for me. <laughs> like, if I was ever going to be converted, this is the verse that would do You're it. unreasonably happy this Triforce episode. You shouldn't be... <laughs> inappropriately. It's inappropriate. it's his, no. Yeah, he's inappropriately happy. So yeah. here it is. Here it is. So the question is, why did God kill 42 lads merely for saying Elijah was bold? So this is from 2 Kings 2.23-24, to 24, and it goes as follows. Then he went up from there to Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, young lads came out from the city and mocked him and said to him, Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. When he looked behind him and saw them, he cursed them in the name of the Lord. Then two female bears, very specific, came out of the woods and tore up 42 lads of their number. <laughs> Why is this a P-Flax version of the Bible? Because they make fun of him for being bald. And the bears what, what, eat them. God. What is this translation? I don't remember it saying lads in the, in the, the Bible. Hey, but I like that part of it because I, I like <laughs> it. But then, so the question is, surely that's not cool. And this guy says, 
First of all, you can't be mean to a prophet of God. And then get this, this is the sign off in this explanation for why this is acceptable. And this blows my mind. God did not break his own moral law. The Bible says, do not murder. Murder is the unlawful taking of life. But all people have sinned against God and are worthy of death. So God had them killed according to the law. I'm like, hang on a second. Whoa, 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 that whoa. That doesn't make sense. So, right, hang on a second. Let's just redo this story. You're walking to Bethel. I'm on the way okay. to Bethel. Yeah. Or Elisha You go down is, the road. You see a it. bald man and you say, and there's, go there's, up, bald there's, man. There's 42 No, there's, lads there's more. The, lads in the... No, no, no. More than that. The, it says, Hundreds It says the bears tore up 42 lads of their number. In other words, there was a right. lot of lads. So, okay, there were like... Let's say there were 60 lads. Right. Okay. Okay. And the lads are there... All right, Baldy, oh, up you go, up you go, up the hill, Baldy, Baldy, go out of here, Baldy, <laughs> you suck. And you're, you, go on then, what do you do? I turn and I say, in the name of the Lord, I cast you. Excellent. And then, out of the woods comes two Roar! female bears. Two female bears come hair and out of the woods. Straight into, into the yeah. lads. And they're like, oh Just my gosh, tearing into two them. Two female bears, what are we charging? There's bears. We shouldn't have called that guy Baldy. But, They're killing us. But apparently, and they kill 42. 42. First of all, tw that's 21 boys each. Yeah, yeah. If two bears descended on a crowd of boys, uh -huh. those boys would be legging it. That's why we would legging yeah, it. Yeah, they can't chase more than one at a time, is the way I see it. Right? Once you're close up to a bear, you can't outrun it. Like, it's yeah, got but they're going to go everything. after one of you. <clears throat> they got long arms and very <laughs> sharp claws. <laughs> the bears. Uh, do they have... Do they have long arms? How long are these bears? Well, arms? bears are they huge, can get 21. man. Like, they, they, they can stand like about double as tall as you when they They're stand big. on their hind but legs. But here's the yeah. thing. What, what the Bible verse doesn't mention is that the bears were equipped with slings and all the boys were dressed in heavy armor and were slowly making their way up the hill. So really, the bears just used their slings with their long arms and, and killed all the lads. Right. That's what I reckon might happen. I mean, mm, maybe. Sure. So, but so I, then, how is anybody, how, how is anybody, like, the, the people are just guessing uh, about this stuff, right? Like, it, like you know, like, what do you mean? I'm a, I'm a certified uh, historian and this is my hot take on this. Like, nobody knows, right? Like, it's not like there was a fucking nobody CCTV knows what, camera. What there, about like, the, see, the bears? Or? Yeah, like, it's just like, a lot of it is just uh, fable, right? Like, it's just, so the, so the next part of the, the story is There's no way that is like, bears did that. Like, no, of course there's well, not. I don't but think... this story, all good stories are based on something that happened. You know, no. It could have happened. Like a bear, like some, a, ki a bear might have mauled a boy. and 42 you know, boys, though. Someone in the town might have said, well, he called me Baldy last week. I bet he, I bet he got, you know, and I cursed him. So I reckon it was God's justice coming down, you know, and that story gets gradually exaggerated. <laughs> I don't even think it needs that. I mean, it's not like, I don't think stories need to be grounded in fact. You could just come up with stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's maybe, so dumb. Yeah, I don't know why you would read that and think, oh, this is this is definitely true. God, oh, this means something. Well, because because these things get bit bandied around. You know, there's a bald man in the village who doesn't want to be called bald, and he wants it to get out there that if he, if anyone calls him bald, they're going to be mauled by a bear. Do you know what I, mean? <laughs> no, I don't think that's true. So, it's so like he curse. is sick of being called baldy, <laughs> and he spreads this fucking story. Yeah, so I was going up the hill, and uh, this, these fucking boys were calling me baldy, so I cursed them, and fucking God came down and was like, fuck you, assholes. Here's two bears. Suck this. And 42 of them got torn to shreds. Uh, so yeah, if you call me Baldy, that's gonna happen to you, you fucker. And then you know that's that's basically it. He was like on his way up the hill, and everybody's like, "Go on, Baldy, go on, go on." And then he's like, "Right, that's it." And then he takes out one of his pills that his doctor gave him, and the Popeye music starts playing, and he pops it in his mouth, and then he starts being inappropriately happy. Yeah, with uh, all the people exactly, that, and, uh, and doesn't care that people call him exactly. Baldy. But I just think that the explanation that. Since we are all sinners, God can kill any of us and we're worthy of death. It's kind of, that's kind of crazy. Like, Man, we're all guilty? Yeah. It's like, a, it's, it's like the dungeon master with all of the fucking, with the bulletproof plan, right? Like, that nothing, it's airtight. Nothing can get in. There's always like, it's always like, yeah, but, but what about this? Oh, I have a reason for that one too. And this, oh, there's a reason. Like, fucking, you can never get around it. Like, you, you can't. You can't fuck with God. He just does, he can just do whatever he wants apparently, and just that's it. I thought confession and all this and absolution and all this stuff and eating the body of Christ and he died for our sins, so we didn't have to like you know fucking die as well. Like I thought, what is God just a fucking just a a, a fickle arsehole just squeezing people like bugs to death, like just because he feels like? No, it. I just I just what? think it's not consistent. 
That, but that's also the boys. Issue. I thought kids. I thought kids were supposed to be sinless. I no, you're was born point, in like, original sin. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, you're, of yeah. course. So even kids have sin. Yeah, because right, we inherit the sin. Oh, that's why you give them cancer. I get right, it. Right. We inherit Good the sin job, from God. Adam and Eve. But this isn't. Well done. This is all just made up. Like obviously, we're saying this is non-religious. No, people. it's not. No, it's not. Right. But no. for, <laughs> for some people, I mean, they 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 explain away a lot of the stuff that doesn't make sense. And no. if they can do that, then fair enough, go for it. But I, all I'm saying is, I, like, I think it, it's yeah. such a big cultural milestone, and and it's such a huge thing, the Bible and religion, that it deserves a look at. And as a non-religious person, I can look at it and and poke at it, and I think uh, I I, I, that's I, fair I guess like there there there's got to be some good things that come out of it, right? Um, but I also think there's some poison in I mean, there. There's like, lots that of good makes stuff. people behave horribly yeah. right. uh, in the name of in the name of of some authority that that acts like a fucking a kid idiot kid a kid with a fucking magnifying glass. But, but there yeah. are there are certainly bits. There is, I mean, some of the things that Jesus says are, are you know, very Zen kind of Buddhist, uh, unsurprisingly, stuff that, that comes across and says, look, let's just be chill to each other and be nice and treat your neighbors as you want to be treated and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, these are actually quite nice lessons. And I, it's rare to think of a book written 2000 years ago that actually says, hey, we should be cool. And you know we should help each other and stuff. That that is a powerful message. Oh yeah, and it's a positive one, and right. it's not enforced in our society through any other way, really. Often, but you don't need you don't need to be threatened with eternal suffering if you don't do it. I think it should be something that we should just explain why it's a good idea and how it's going to help people. But instead, obviously, at the time, it was much easier to convince people to do things if you said, if you don't, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity. I think some things like modern things are like superhero stories, you know, a kind of this 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 heroic kind of attitude where you're helping people and saving people and being good to people and, you know, being good to each other. Feels like these are the modern parables, you know, that we, we take on board. Iron Man's and, and sacrifice of, at the end of yeah. uh, Infinity War. <laughs> When exactly. he accepted the sins. Died for us. Yeah, he died for our sins. Tears right. were streaming down my face for that one. Yeah. Man, I was so moved. I, exactly. I don't, yeah, I don't it's, know. A, it's a last few years have been, uh, been, been a lot of tears for blockbusters from me. Han Solo dying in the first Star Wars movie. The re of the, the new trilogy, I cry. I, I don't cry uh, when people. I don't. I don't cry when 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 characters die. I cry when something epic happens. Right. I'm like, oh, like the music. Really the music good. comes in. The the like, mu the welling music wells up. Yeah. And I just, I cry like, at movies all the fucking time. Inspiration. Like, so stuff. I'm such a softy when it comes to films. Really? I mean, it, yeah. I I literally like I was watching Great Expectations on iPlayer the other I think it was last month. Mrs. F was like, "Watch this. This is like, you know, Dickens yeah, classic." I saw it recently, and yeah. and uh, it's got a uh, very young Obi-Wan Kenobi in it, Alleganis, and it's got like a bunch of other actors in it anyway. And it's oh, it, it's I, wa I watched the new one. Okay. But, I watched yeah, the old sure. one. It, it's brilliant. And uh, cuz I'm such a fucking idiot, I had I didn't know the story of Great Expectations. Like I never watched it or, or read it or anything like that. Um, it was great and it was very moving and I cried and all the rest of it. And I'm, I'm just, anything, anything like that. Like I've seen commercials that made me cry, Did you, cartoons, uh, anything. What about like the Center Parks commercials with the bears? Do those, those ones ever make you cry? Only you the one where ones? the family got torn apart by two female bears. Yes. That, that was my favorite. And they Center killed Parks 42 commercial. boys. Um, yeah. I, another one that always gets me is, um, Disney's Pixar's uh, Inside Out, you know the part oh, where, where Bejangles and the oh. and the fairy are stuck in like the the oh, pit of so sad. stolen dreams or whatever, time. and they every keep time. they keep trying and trying and trying, they can't do it. And then the final one, Mister Bejangles or whatever his name is, is like, "All right, we got it this time," and he fucking does the ultimate sacrifice and yep. jumps off oh. of the wagon. Oh, fuck. Yep. that tears death of me Spock up. in Wrath of Khan every time tears me up inside. Yep. It's a, I mean, I, it's weird because you, I feel manipulated, but at the same time, I want it to happen. Like, I don't feel like I think some people get very paranoid about crying at movies because like, I think it's good that you're in touch with your emotions. So I think dude, more people need to be. Yeah. Like, and it, I think if you were incapable of experiencing emotions, maybe uh, maybe it's time to get yourself uh, checked out, you know, like uh, do, do some like uh, we can so be too sociopath cynical. screening. Yeah, yeah. I think totally. people can be you don't too have cynical. to be all SAS Cockley hard man. Oh, uh, mate, oh, you crying there? What? you a pussy come over here and let me give you a wedgie i'll give you something to cry about <laughs> let me shove this bottle up your ass it's not weird 
So I don't do it all the time. Just uh, it's just me. It just Flashbacks. wouldn't normally do this. Flashbacks from cadets again. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, so the TLDR here, kids, is don't join the cadets. Uh, it's uh, unless you want to have bottles. I, I think your honestly, ass. you're right. Like there are some really cool epic moments in movies and stories that like that make you think, yeah, great. And that's what it's about. It's about those cool like like moments where you think yeah like or like someone gets their own back or something you know i i think there's two we i, I always i say this a lot but like you know i've been playing a few um more story based video games and some of those have some great little great little story bits right. in where it feels like i know stories in video games are not the best and they've always been very very weak compared to an actual book or a, or a decent movie yeah but sometimes it's very, I don't know, it's a good feeling to like be, be, well, actually you must experience it in Dota sometimes when, you know, you've played against a specific team or something and you've lost to them before and then you finally bring it back and you, you get a victory in or whatever. Oh man. You know, it's, it can be like a really uh, emotional moment in, in, in all forms of media from sporting events to like, you know, even, even like books, you can be like gripped to the page and be like, oh my God, I hope this gets resolved. And ultimately, the good ones do in a way that is satisfying and not just some sort of cop out. Because, I, I mean, even in this sort of dystopian attitude where the good guys don't have to win, it feels like modern, with since Game of Thrones, the good guys don't have to win. Um, apart from at the very end, in which case it just doesn't get all gets thrown out of the window. Just please ignore. But, like, you know, certainly in the middle seasons, it didn't feel like, like, for me, it's all about unpredictable stuff that's what i like do, I don't do you like... think that's because as a as a and I, I i hate to seem lofty but as a modern audience i think we are more sophisticated not us but people when it comes to watching movies and tv shows and stuff we want our media to be more complicated and people are willing to sit through game of thrones and it was a huge show that crossed all kinds of boundaries of age and, and demographics. It was just one of those things. And people loved it. And it was brutal and unpredictable, but it was also very complicated. And there was a lot to the characters and the stories. Would that have played in the same way in the 50s and 60s? I don't think it would. I think people would have completely rejected it. They would have said it's too violent, it's too, too much. This is the work of Satan. Right. Oh, I, just think, I just think audiences weren't ready. They hadn't been educated and grown up with shows that are more complicated with time. Our TV shows and our films, I mean, if you look at the Marvel Universe, right, just as, a, as an example, as a blockbuster, that they had a plot thread that ran through, what was it, 24, 25 films? And then it, the final payoff and people had followed this plot and followed these characters. That's unusual for a blockbuster. Blockbusters didn't used to be like that. They just made a movie and hoped it made a shitload of money. Fuck, remember Terminator 2? Oh my Great God. Great movie. I mean, good example is oh. Avengers 2. Like, I mean, the Avengers of that, that, that story was very much, uh, it has to be independent, but also everyone's been following this thing, this story. And so they have, so you can bring in new people, but you can also, you know, make it very fulfilling for everyone who's watched the entire saga. Right. I, I think with, in some cases, like I, I, I'm torn actually about it now. Maybe I'm wrong because I do like James Bond, even though I know he's going to survive till the end or John Wick, you know, even though I know John Wick's not going to die. Oh, I want John you know. Wick to die. Fuck it um, now. I, I enjoy the John Wick movies Fuck. in that sense. And uh, like, uh, like at the same time, like, you know, I can, I can enjoy watching like i watched um like dunkirk and the darkest hour and some of these like war movies about churchill and dunkirk and things and it's a very epic tale and you know with the dramatic music going even though you know it's gonna be all right you can still get into that oh no are they not gonna be all right kind of thing you can still lose yourself in that epic moment i, I think if you, as long as you can empathize that's the most important thing if the, if you can't empathize with the characters <laughs> And you're, and you're just... I love how the sound just cut off. That You just hear like this fucking plane this descending plane. Sorry. and the sound cuts off. Like, oh, I didn't fuck. realize the war was still on. <laughs> yeah. There go our brave boys out there to fight the oh, Nazis. Man. Fuck the Nazis. Oh, I pulled a load of Nazis down and stuff, <laughs> put a bottle up their ass. What? It, what are you what? into bottles up the asses today? Yeah, Lewis, what happened, what man? Doing? Holy what shit. What are they doing? I just seem to associate that with the SAS. <laughs> the and SAS. That feels like the kind of thing they do as a joke. That's, yeah, that's what you happened. When he was in cadets and they visited the SAS training camp, that's what happened to him. They, were like, they shot oh, the bottle up his bum. All right, we oh, need we a all, volunteer. We all do this. this is a, <laughs> Lewis put his hand up. And then up. we pushed him off a cliff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think they were just fucking with you, Lewis, when they shoved a bottle of your ass and threw you off a cliff and they yeah, told you, yeah. if you do this, you'll be in the SES, Lewis. Like, <laughs> <laughs> a boy has been found washed up on shore today with a bottle rammed in his ass. Uh, 
<laughs> Doesn't seem to remember he what happened. He says he's a member of the SAS. <laughs> <laughs> he was <laughs> he's been on a night mission in, in German territory. <laughs> he's got a ball gag and a fucking bottle <laughs> jammed in his ass. <laughs> Man. It is all that macho y wank, though, isn't it? It's always led by these kind of people who fucking give you a wet willy and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Those types of assholes. People who play sport, people who play football. Or I watched this thing um, on Netflix at the the Aaron Hernandez. Have you watched the Aaron Hernandez? No, story I meant to. I meant to. Is actually. he the quarterback? Is he the quarterback? American He's football? the quarterback a few years ago yeah. who murdered. Yeah, someone. yeah. Crazy. And it's amazing because he he was so weird, like in such a jock, and it's surrounded in this world of macho bullshit that he was just sort of lost in that that world and bit his behavior. Almost like we if we link back to the start of the the, the show, like it today, the show, the podcast, <laughs> where we fucking were talking about you know, like like your what you consider to be okay, your personal area. Yeah. Right. You know, he was the kind of guy who wouldn't you know, you meet these guys who will just fucking slap you on the arm or like, I don't know, like, like I don't know, push you or do things like physical things to you. Yeah. And they don't even think it's like, a, a, that it's part of who they are and they, like their attitude of what's friendly and what's behavior. And it's like this learned, it's like two gorillas, I don't know, like jostling for position. You know, it's, it's like a weird animal instinctual thing that they do and they learn in these sports teams to be... Like so like, I don't know, so adrenaline fueled and wild and crazy and dramatic. Yeah. And I think that, that all became part of his, I don't know, I think it just changed who he was and he became this weird, weird guy, like physically violent to people, like women and men and other people. And it, it culminated in him just doing this crazily macho things, like 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 he thought he was in the mafia or something, you yeah. know? Do, you, do um, you think part of it is that if you're constantly, and I mean day in, day out, having people screaming at you, you've got to be competitive, you've got to win everything, that it, it changes you from being a person who evaluates things to a person with one goal and everything looks like an obstacle. So it's like that thing is, you know, what is it? If you only have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I don't know. Well, I, I think with, with Aaron Hennett, I'm not, I'm not shitting on all sports people. I think he had brain disease from right. sports but this, too. This, I mean, this he didn't had help. Serious, this didn't help. He had 10 years of brain injury from sports that, that said he'd had like, when they looked at his brain afterwards, he was like, you know, he had the brain of an 80 year old or something crazy. They opened up his skull. Oh, just mashed potato in here. What That's the what they said about. Uh, <laughs> remember that wrestler, um, Chris Benoit. The um, he like not. I don't think it, people talk about him anymore because he murdered his family. But it was right. the same. Uh, he killed himself when they did an autopsy. Um, he was like they. He had like the brain of a ninety-year-old with dementia. Like uh, he was. It was so battered from like pile drivers and just just from just from wrestling, like concussions, like whatever. Uh, over the years, um, and they and they think that like that mixed with drugs, he just like fucking. I, went I, off I think on. that it, 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 it's a billion dollar industry where these guys are willing to put themselves through this for for the. You know, it's a little bit like I hate to say it, but like sometimes when we do like a shoot or whatever, like so so for example when, when Game Grumps came down, uh -huh. they were doing crazy stuff. They were just like jumping off a fucking f fucking like fence. And like just falling on the like twisting their arms and stuff like actually physically hurting themselves for they like. They seem to have a lot more energy than we did. <laughs> I think. Our, yeah. I don't know if it's like cultural. But you get the or impression but... that that when when but everyone's done it as well. Like everyone gets this this idea to like play it up. Like if you're doing a play, you kind of over egg it to to put on a good show, and you do things that you wouldn't otherwise do. Uh, you like um, physically anyway. And I think with wrestlers and and footballers and maybe they. Maybe they push themselves. Yeah, they gotta like beyond pump themselves. They, they, they up can't and help stuff, it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, everyone could tell them, "Don't push yourself." Like the, the whole team could be like the coach and everyone, and the medical people could be like, "Push yourself. Do not do these physical things that will hurt you." And they do them anyway because they feel they have to or they feel they want to. It's like their decision, but it, that ends up giving them these like brain injuries, and then they are left alone. They're like they're just, they're just like put. They're like, "All right, go home. You're on your own now." And they don't have grounding they don't have friends they don't have like they're in this weird world where they've suddenly got money but they don't know what's I, I think they need more I don't know like if you if you're gonna be a billionaire sports team who is making money off giving you know teenagers brain injuries then the least thing least you should do is fucking make sure they're looked after like I don't know like or, or give them proper medical care afterwards I don't know like it feels like maybe the, I'm the wrong, thing I, I think the thing is when it comes to sport it's it's a very sacred institution like not not just teams but the sport because people love it so much 
American football or in this country football yeah. or basketball that when it comes out that actually this is going to really fuck people up in later years there is a knee jerk reaction of you cannot take this away from us and i think it, it's it's weird because i don't know if you guys know but at the moment in in virginia in in the united states there is a this big big protest because they want to bring in what what people refer to as common sense gun laws in other words background checks and stuff like that yeah. so that you know, not just anyone can buy a gun yeah. and a ban wasn't on the, wasn't the outcome of that like some guy ruled and he just said only give guns to good people or something like that like that was I, the, i'm not sure what it boiled I mean, down to which is okay it, i mean i i just think that it they also wanted to ban what they called like assault weapons, so like heavy weaponry. Uh, like you know, if you do, you need an assault rifle. Do you need a, a fifty caliber sniper rifle? And I think the attitude from a lot of people in the states is, well, if I want it, I'm an American, I I can have it. Yeah, I have and a right. It, to, I have to, a right to own right. it. Yeah, it, it's it's a very tough argument to have, especially with people who are essentially really into guns and and uh, militias and all that kind of stuff. They're like, that's a part of who they are. They love it. It's like trying to take football away from them, where you say, look, this is really bad and people are getting hurt. We need to stop this. They're like, fuck you! Ah, like they're very defensive because this is their thing. Oh yeah, this is what they're into. Honestly, there's a lot of there's a lot of people like just just playing devil's advocate. I mean, yeah, gun laws, there there are gun laws in America and there are a ton of people who responsibly own weapons, uh, like them, go to firing ranges as like a hobby or whatever. Right. That don't rock up to public events and, and shoot people and stuff. There's There's millions of people like that. But the problem is, the underlying problem is in America, not just America, a lot of the West now, is that there's this looming mental health crisis that, is, it, that nobody is, is able to even fathom how to deal with. You know what I mean? Like, and it just gets worse. Like the, 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 the West's approach to dealing with mental health is still terrible. And there's a lot of people that are just left to their own devices in a country like America where it's... Even though the, there's regulations and stuff like that, it is easy to come by weapons and ammunition for those weapons. Right. And where where's the where like where where's the help for people that need it? And how are they getting to the point where they're they're doing these things? You know what I mean? Like it, it's crazy. It, it is it is interesting. It's because we have this we have with the English speaking world. You know, we've got us and Australia, New Zealand, and, and Canada. And and a lot of people in in other countries as well who are English speaking, and we 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 consume American media, we consume American propaganda. The internet largely is very American centric. There's a lot of creators and stuff, and a lot of the shows we watch, and you know, we are very associated with the American news, the American story. They, they won like, the culture war these, in Civ for sure, like definitely. they did, yeah. and, and and we feel like I mean, our country, we we have these things that work, and we just we look at their country and we're just like, how like. How are you not like making these changes? Like that are, are just good for everyone. Like there, there's not. I'm not saying you have to stop playing football. I'm not saying you have to stop having guns. You know, I'm. I'm just saying like take these steps towards like rationalism. <laughs> like I don't know. Like like you've won the culture war, but you've forgotten about science. <laughs> like come on, put some put some points. Some dudes change some dudes over. I, I think like, um, you know what you were saying about mental health is really true. And a lot of people will compare gun statistics, which is, I, I think, completely the wrong way to do it because there are lots of countries in the world that have guns and it's too easy. If you go down the gun route of statistics and say, look at all these people dying, it's the guns, then people can easily point to countries that have guns and don't all kill each other and your argument is defeated. But what you said was, was completely right, which is there is a massive, there's a big poverty uh, problem in terms of the, 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 the gaps in society between people who have enough and people who don't. You have a huge drug problem in America and you have a huge mental health problem. And now in a lot of states, you can buy extremely powerful uh, guns and easily, which, yeah. which is combined together leads to what you have in the States, yeah. which is not, I mean, America is not out of control. I no. mean, you know, most uh, the, people these, are fine. It's, a, it's got a huge population. Like it's, you know, these are, these are these are these are just things that you hear about in the news, and it, it, right. it's it seems like it's happening all the time. But really, when you look at it, it's not actually happening all the time. Right, it's, it's still but there a problem, are places. But there are places where there is a huge problem with like opioid crisis and stuff like that. Sure, and there was this is funny 
because I was watching a clip this morning. It was on live stream fails, which is just it, it, they should rename that subreddit. It's not most of them are not, aren't fails. And this guy, he's I think he's a psychiatrist or a psychologist, Doctor K. I think his name is. He's a streamer, um, and he was talking about why there is a crisis in mental health from his perspective as a practicing doctor. If you look at why people aren't getting better and why people are being put on drugs so much is because when you go in to see the doctor, they can make $150 from the insurance company of for course. an hour of their time talking to you and finding out what's wrong with you and trying to help you get better and all the rest of it. Or, oh no, I think it was 200, 200 bucks for that hour the insurance company will pay out. Or for a 15 minute appointment, you get 150 bucks if you just prescribe that person some medication. Yeah. So the, the obvious route is that doctors will prescribe brain pills. And after a while, they stop giving them to you or the insurance company stops paying out. And you then either go back to having mental health problems yeah. or you turn to drugs and you have that problem. So when we talk about solving the problem, it is soluble. It is completely soluble. We just need to not fucking turn our back on people and say, well, money's more important. But that's very that's a very hard sell in American politics because these companies are very powerful. Yeah. And they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear well, it. Well, and they don't have the social systems like to to deal with. You know, there's 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 people that have gone on to commit crimes where they sh they should have probably been in some sort of institute uh, under like yeah. close supervision, like as a as some form of threat to themselves or society, and like those places exist in America, but they're private and they're expensive you know what i mean yeah There's yeah i mean here's the thing about like that like uh, it doesn't even have to be permanent like these people sometimes people go through bad times and within a couple of weeks or months you don't have to be on these drugs forever you know you just need to like a lot of times you just have to zap something or or, or you know like like it doesn't have to be the be all and the end or sometimes people are just having a bad time for a few months because of various reasons or th things have piled up or they're in a bad state of mind for unknown situations in their life if people have a, a troublesome life then that's it's gonna happen i think i think i I think there's a lot of problems in our world and I don't think we're going to solve them. No, all. actually, I think we're so close. Like, I don't want you to cut. Like, I, I think we're on the verge <laughs> okay, of a solution. We're there. Yeah, like, let's I, keep, I feel let's like not, if I just yeah. talk about things I don't know much about for like just a little bit longer, we, <laughs> we have a fucking good shot at solving. We'll, we'll break it. Yeah. yeah, we'll crack it. I think like, <laughs> and, and we're so all close. the presidents of the world will listen Fact, to we're Triforce. Like this close, guys. We were, we were so Does close. Does anybody else but, have any and have any like uh, facts that they can't back up? I don't know that, if that they just want to but well, I don't know if we're just <laughs> are we just parroting like this popular culture that everything's terrible. I don't think it is all terrible. I think like there's a lot of really good it's stuff. It's not. It's not all terrible. That uh, the thing is, it it only feels like it's terrible because of. Uh, is this of, that World War Two thing again? It's like we're all saying everything is terrible so that we force people to change for the better. Like we have to assume that everything is terrible, or else we're like, oh, everything's sorted. Okay. Well, we're, we won't do anything then, but we, it could always be better because we're humans, yeah. right? We always assume that some of the us. grass is greener. We always assume that everyone could be better and happier and richer and have more things if if all we do. And so that way we're cost, we're constantly complaining because we're constantly. I, I, I think unhappy. it's worked. We work to. But I, I, I think it does work because if you compare the life of the average person, even a poor person in Britain with the life they would have had a thousand years ago, they're arguably better or off. Or even a hundred years ago. Yeah, I mean, they're, yeah. they're better off. Oh, man, it was miserable. I mean, we've had this conversation So before, we are sure, getting there. But... It's just very slow. Like, uh, human nature and society is extremely slow to change. But are we ever, are we, as humans, are we ever going to stop complaining? No. Are we no, ever but we shouldn't. No. We shouldn't. It, the moment we say everything's cool, that we will never go anywhere. We have to, it is in our nature to strive and complain and not be happy with our situation. Yeah. And you should never be. You should always be looking to make things better. Otherwise, what's the fucking point? For other people. That's very biblical. That's very biblical, PFLAX. That's like a modern proverb. <laughs> like PFLAX 1-1. One, one. <laughs> you should always be looking to make things better or what's for other people or what's the point? What's the fucking point? You see, this is just like the Bible. You're misquoting me. the sermon of the baldy. The baldy climbed the hill and spoke, <laughs> spaketh to the boys, to the lads, and he spake. Why, why you lads? <laughs> if thou do not be nice to one another, I will summon upon you two female bears to go savage and loose amongst you and you will be torn limb from limb and a bottle will be inserted into your butthole. <laughs> I curse you this. The, the, the thing is, they say happiness comes from within, right? And you can truly be happy within yourself 
without any external sort of like uh, factors uh, contributing to like your unhappiness, right? You know, like if you're a monk or something and you and you meditate all day long for like six months by yourself, you're going to be happy, right? You're going to find inner peace and you're, you're, you'll, you'll probably be like happy. You're doing this thing. Um, but but the, the minute you finish and you go to the store to buy a Kit Kat and like somebody, you know, buds in front of you or like, you know, fucking just does some stupid shit like that, you know, people normally do that that's going to chip away at you right like instantly you're going to be like you're going to be on this higher plane and then they'll bring you right back down to like uh the normal like level of the human psyche right i think because- you're like the footballer i think you are different though if you're a monk you've had this different brain chemistry going on for too long and it's made you but weird. I, I like the idea of the monk spending years in isolation achieving nirvana and going to buy a kit kat and some guy barges in yeah, front of like, him he's like oh no fucking way baldy <laughs> oh my god and then <laughs> oh, all of a sudden sucks. nirvana is is no longer <laughs> a thing you're like <laughs> yeah he's just like oh fuck, fuck like wasted all that time yeah yeah Asshole. Yeah, I think there was like I was reading this thing by this guy. He's like a he's he's one of these um he's kind of like a psychologist, but he he does like um these seminars on like, you know, like self-awareness, like inner peace and stuff. It's it's fairly interesting stuff. I'm not like massively into it, but every once in a while like whatever. Uh and he was telling the story like similar to what I just said about this this monk and he was like desperate to find to to reach like this this, you know, state of mind this this higher state of mind where he just like you know not not nothing in this material world bothered him anymore he was like spiritually attuned and everything and he's like fucking meditated for like six months or whatever and it was the same he like after six months of meditation he got a letter from like the local council saying that he had to go down and collect something or or whatever so he's like okay great you know like i'm spiritually attuned nothing will bother me or phase me i'm just gonna float down to the office and fucking stand so he gets down there there's this massive fucking snaking queue like out the building and everything he's like no problem i'm fine i'm just gonna stand in the queue wait my turn he's there for like three hours he finally gets to the till or whatever and then the and the person at the desk is like uh actually you needed to fill in form 1c uh and what you've done here is you filled in form 1f so you're gonna have to go off and and fill in form 1c and come back and at that point he just fucking lost it like like after six (laughs) months of meditation everything he's like you fuck i've been in a fucking line for three fucking hours with this fucking form that took me five fucking hours to fill out like he just went completely nuts like he just melted down so um so yeah I think um, I, I, it, the problem is other people. What, what is what it boils down to? Amen. Yeah, hell. That's what they say. Hell is other yeah. people. But we need them. God bless them. God, God bless Otherwise, who would li- who would listen to the Triforce podcast? God bless him, everyone. God bless you. All right, thanks everyone for listening. Yeah, that's the Triforce podcast. It's over. <laughs> we will see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.